family business. Uh, my grandfather called all the employees co-workers and that was a true true definition of what all these people were. We all worked together. I worked there for 10 years. Um, there was a lot of love involved between all of the people that were able to work at the bakery and nobody was any different than anybody else. In fact, today again I've heard more stories about my grandfather uh, getting there four or five o'clock in the morning, uh, meeting people, saying hello to people. He knew everybody by name. It was truly a family not only owned by a family, but the whole bakery community was a big family, and that family's still here today. How many people are you expecting to serve today? About 120. Was it your grandfather who started the bakery? That's correct. My grandfather had come from uh, back east. Uh, he was not in good health, and he wanted to start a door-to-door -door bakery here. He started in 1930, and we uh, stayed in business until 1970. And then my dad uh, came into the bakery after he was out of college in, like, 1936. And then I came there after I was out of college, which was about 1961. The Olympic bread situation just came about as a stroke of good fortune in my grandfather's intelligence. He capitalized on that because in 1932 the games were held here in Los Angeles and uh, he thought it would be a good idea to bake bread for the uh, United States team and that was the birth of Olympic bread. And then we used to, then we pr uh, provided it for all the Olympic games through 1968. <laughs> I saw uh, a letter from the King of England commenting on on the Olympic bread to your uh, grandfather. Your... The, the Olympics were held in London. I think it was 1948, but the uh, uh, that letter did uh, arrive, and the, they considered that bread like cake. It was the terms they used for it. The white bread tasted like cake, so it was very well received. I'm 48 years old. Since I was a guy living in Culver City, Helms Bakery is number one. I love that. The, those raspberry tarts, right? And the chocolate donuts. And the bread was fantastic. When you drive by Venice Boulevard, you know you're in heaven because you can smell the ba bread baked. The other thing we did, which I don't think a lot of people probably remember, uh, when uh, Armstrong uh, landed on the moon, the uh, NASA had had the bakery produce a bread for that flight. So they, the first thing they had up there was a sandwich of some sort and it was made out of Helm's bread. And that was. Uh, the highlight, another highlight. How did the uh, Helms Athletic Association come about? Well, that again, that was my grandfather and Bill Schroeder, who has passed away, and then Braven Dyer, who is here today at the picnic. Uh, those were the, and Mrs. Farnham, who is also here at the picnic. But Mr. Schroeder came to my grandfather with this idea uh, to have this foundation, and uh, it sounded good to him, and they finally were able to build the building next to the bakery and it was uh, a wonderful association between the Athletic Foundation and Southern California and they did a lot for amateur athletics throughout this country and worldwide and particularly high school athletics in Southern California. My grandfather was not an athletic looking person. He was rather rotund and short but he went to Syracuse University, tried out for the football team there. Pop Warner was the coach. Pop Warner said young man, you, I suggest you don't do this, you're not big enough to play football. So he went and tried out for the crew and was the coxswain of the crew at Syracuse University while he was there at college. And he just had always loved sports. My father, his son, was a great athlete. All of us in our family have always liked athletics, so it was just a natural thing for him. Well, I learned a little story today from Raven Dyer Jr., who said that Paul Helms' uncle was a deaf baseball player with the Cincinnati Red Legs. Red Legs or Red, not Red Sox, I'm not sure which, Red Legs. And um, uh, it may have been stemmed from that. And that's where, actually, he, I learned today too because Paul Helm's middle name was Hoyt and his uncle's, his uncle was named Hoyt. And um, that way he was the baseball player who was deaf. Since January of 74, we've 
own and manage the property. You know, this uh, picnic shows how much of a community of, of friends there are and employees and so forth. And um, we kind of think that the people that we have as tenants there are friends and we have a nice community. It's a very nice community that we're trying to build too. And I'm Wally Marks III, um, son, and working at the family. And we've carried on the Helms tradition. Keeping it in the family is really true. And um, we have a lot of joy. There's a lot of wonderful history with, with, with the building. And, and doing eclectic things and making a real mixed use of the property with the furniture stores and the photography studios, the art studios, and the general offices. It's a, it's a wonderful mix. We're very proud of it.